First, I'm answering the big question. Will my feral video be taken down? No. The answer is no, your feral video will not be taken down if there are things I mention at the end of the video. So let's get on to the actual video. Morning. What happened to my YouTube channel? And why it is getting terminated? The topic I'll be discussing is about the breakage of Feral's TOS, and it's more important than you think, especially if you're a Feral YouTuber or you want to make content on Feral. The video will be split up into two sections. Why did Keck have their channel terminated for uploading Feral content? And then what content is okay to make for Feral? I've done some pretty decent research to make sure what I'm saying is as correct as I can possibly be. And I've even constructed a playlist of legal videos on the topic of IP infringement and such down below in the description if you'd like to check that out. I did try and DM Keck so I could have some more accurate input, but uh... Yeah, that didn't really happen. But with that being said, sit back and relax while we hop into the first section. former Animal Jam YouTuber that started to switch over to feral content once news of the game picked up, but after a few months his channel got terminated. But why? To answer that, we'll look at his feral videos, and the feral videos that got him striked and eventually terminated in question. Like it showed in my last clip, I lost the recordings but I do have the thumbnail images, so let's go over those. The ones on the left are the normal feral content. The ones on the right, on the other hand, are the types of videos that led to strikes on Keck's channel. But why? Well, now that Keck's channel is officially terminated, we can look on what he was terminated for. YouTube said, this account has been terminated because we received multiple third-party claims from Wildworks of copyright infringement regarding material the user posted. Like I was expecting all along, and trying to warn people by making this video, it was copyright infringement. Now on to the next question, but how did Keck infringe on Wildworks copyright? We'll go see Feral's actual TOS to see. We're on the Feral TOS right now, and what we're going to focus on is a bit of the UGC section, and a bit of the rules of conduct section, but I'll link the whole article below so you can fully read it. Let me go down here. You are responsible for your user-generated content. You may not upload user-generated content that infringes a third party's intellectual property rights or that violates the law. And then the second one. Wildworks may, in its sole discretion, remove, edit or disable user-generated content for any reason, including if Wildworks responsibly determines that your UGC violates the agreement. Wildworks does not assume any responsibility or liability for UGC for removing it or not removing it in other content. So that's a big part right there, but I really want to focus on is in the rules of conduct section. Publish or post or distribute UGC or content that you do not have permission to fully distribute. <laughs> AKA the leaks on the data mines. All done with Feral's TOS now, we still have Kex ready to go through, as it brings more light and understanding to the situation, and he brought up some points that I wanted to talk on, so let's go.
what's going on guys, this is Frank back here with another uh, Umbreon Patrol video. Um, today I'm just going to be making a quick video explaining what happened to my YouTube channel, my main channel, and why it is getting terminated. So pretty much, if you didn't already, I have three copyright strikes on that channel. Uh, two from Wildworks, one that's from a different company, but kind of unrelated to most uh, content on my channel. And pretty much what happened, several weeks, um, I covered a couple of them, and they started striking them down. Now, some people say I ultimately deserve this because it's their game, but then there's also technically it's fair use because I added my own creation to these you know my own gameplay own commentary and whatnot and one of them was actually like full-on fair use here's the first problem it wasn't fair use just because you added some things onto it if you stole the cake but you added some icing and decorations it doesn't change the fact that the thing you're adding to isn't yours aka it won't excuse you from punishment and as we saw in Frail's TUS, your UGC is property of their IP, it belongs to them, and if they see it breaks their TUS, the video, the content, or whatever it is, they have a right to take it down. And they still were able to strike it and completely ban me from appealing. Keck wasn't allowed to appeal the strikes on YouTube because the violation was obvious and therefore non-negotiable. Or you have lost an appeal recently and the option for further appeals has been temporarily suspended. AKA Keck broke Blanton third party TOS slash committed copyright infringement. The strike. My YouTube channel was supposed to be scheduled to be taken down on the 18th uh, of December. It's now the 23rd for me. So, uh, and the channel is still up. So I don't know what's going on with my channel. If I try to upload, I can't. Um, if I try to appeal the strikes, I can't because obviously I'm banned from doing so. And also, uh, I can't pretty much do anything on the channel. I can't upload any videos or whatnot. The only thing I can do is edit like thumbnails, titles, descriptions of videos, and I can post on my community tab, and that's pretty much it. But that channel is now rendered pretty much useless because I can't upload on it. I've reached out to Wildworks multiple times and have uh, probably like over 20 times I've tried to contact them, and I only got one response, which is from Clark, the CEO. And he wasn't really focusing on my channel, but like stuff I had done in the past, and he was just really. Uh, it seems like he was angry that I tried to contact him so many times, but in my defense, I was on a very tight time limit because I only had seven days to try and appeal the strikes when I first got the third one. So it was really just out of desperation that I tried to, you know, contact him so many times after getting uh, declined and banned from appealing again. Now I've actually went ahead and contacted YouTube about this because I feel the first strike I got, which was for a concept art of a feral sign up, um, beta sign up that was three months ago, three months ago, maybe even four now, that looked oddly similar to the official one and by the way we did not know that it would look exactly like the one that they were officially going to release this was a concept version of it i'm not going to show it obviously because i feel like they would probably try to strike this but it technically was in fair use if you read on fair use you will understand how that works and i have been for the past two weeks now and i couldn't appeal for it again not fair use I'll explain how fair use works in the next section of the video, but for now just know that no matter how fair use something is, if it breaks the property holder's rights slash infringes their copyright, showing the leaked concept art publicly, they have full rights to take it down as it's their property, even if the video had fair use. But yeah, uh, I'm still gonna try to get the old channel back. I'm not gonna stop trying until it actually gets terminated, and even then I'm gonna still try, keep on trying, and when YouTube completely says no, obviously, uh, then I guess I will just... You know, give up on it. I'm gonna be posting on here for now, but if I do get my main channel back, I will make a video saying, yeah, I got it back, I got it back, and uh, I'll go back to that channel, but... A lot of people pointed out that it, it isn't really fair to me, because a lot of people actually found out about Feral, and maybe even about Animal Jam, because of me and all my videos on the game. And I pointed that out to Clark, and he, he didn't really care. <laughs> To say the least. Now, I'm not going to read out the full email because I don't think he wants that shared, but I think you can get the point. Using another metaphor for this, if a fake Pokemon game got a ton of people into Pokemon, it doesn't help that it's still copyright infringed, and that's not wanted or appreciated by the company, no matter how many people you're attracted. I'll also talk about the people who said that this was unfair to Keck after we finished watching Keck's video. I tried to ask if they could revo revoke the strikes, but he really never gave a clear answer if he would or not. But considering that, I don't think they are. And that upsets me a lot, obviously. You know, I've apologized for what I've done as previous aliases. Like, obviously, Keck wasn't my first username on Amazon. I've had many other usernames. And I've done, you know, pretty bad things. I've broken the terms of service. And I've apologized countless times already. And this time, I'm restarting. I'm not going to break the terms of service. I'm actually going to play again because I want to play again. But recently, well, actually, since last year at this point, is when I quit again. And I was only playing to make videos. So anytime I would be online, I would be on to make videos. But I'm actually playing outside of that now. And I just feel 
that will, that will give me that push and motivation again because I was uh, expressing on Instagram that I lost some, a lot of motiv motivation to make videos after like a year of work just went down the drain because why well, works didn't like me. Like I'm not trying to sound, uh, make it sound like it's a personal thing, like they're going after me, but it very much seems so as like the day my channel got terminated, I got banned on Amazon as well. And I've already striked the video down on this channel also, but I was kind of expecting that video to get taken down anyway. But pretty much this is a PSA, I guess, and I'm out. I'm not going to upload weeks anymore. No, not at all. And even if I do, I'll do it on a separate channel because I'm not risking losing another channel over wanting to make videos on leaks. As much as I love doing it and- Kek, you just said that you'd still make leaks but on another channel. <sighs> it made more people excited about the game. Clark said if I wanted to, if I was asking my strikes to be revoked because I was raising awareness and excitement over security flaws apparently, they strongly de uh, declined my offer, which that wasn't my point at all, but... Here's another interesting bit. This is gonna be a big one, hold on to your hats. What Clark meant by security flaws was the leaks. A leak of the game isn't just a fun little preview or sneak peek. An actual leak is a security flaw because it's a weak area in the system. That's how it gets leaked. Remember when we were going over the bit where he said he attracted a lot of people to the game? We just talk about it here. But you can also attract people who also want to leak the game like really bad, and even be tempted to hack or mess up something in the system, because you're showing that there's weak areas, a little leak in the water pipe. Keck said this was an intentional, which I believe, but he's got to understand how a company, especially a game company, don't want private content to be released and showing that the property can be leaked quite easily. I'm not saying that it's easy to leak actually important things, but if you look at Feral Leaks, there's a plethora of videos on it, so it always seems like the game is getting messed with from an outside view. And also showing security flaw, the leaks can even cause people to be insecure, because not just images can be leaked, but passwords, personal information such as emails and etc. can also be leaked. That's why Wildworks really doesn't want people leaking their stuff, showing security flaws, and it's just a polite thing to do. Take a shot every time I said leak. I mean, I've tried countless things, and other people have, you know, shown their support, and I thank all of you for that, and, you know, I'm pretty sure there was, like, a, a petition that promoted that a little bit. I don't know what that's at now, but I haven't checked it since, like, last week, but this is just a quick video explaining what all happened, and, uh, yeah, I'm gonna keep on trying, but if I don't get back, you know, you'll find me here, I'll the video soon, and, uh, yeah, that should be it for today's video. If you like today's video, make sure to like, subscribe more, and, uh, if you could share this as well, just if you don't know, uh, what well, if you know people that watch me and they don't know that I've moved to this channel now, uh, just share this video for them, I guess, and, uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. And that's the end of Keck's explanation video, and the points I wanted to make on it. Now for the ending bits of the section. The unofficial feral discord, and what people had to say about Keck's channel being terminated. Once I found out about feral through Wisteria Moon's great feral videos, I desperately searched around for a discord about the game. And that's where I found the unofficial Discord. Coming in at over 6,000 members, it was easily the biggest public feral Discord, so I joined. But this is where things went a bit downhill. The reason I bring up the Discord was because the Discord had a channel dedicated to providing leaks and data mines, and sharing leaks was common in other channels. What is a bit painfully ironic is that Keck is one of the owners of the Discord. And right by the leaks, they have a channel dedicated for showing ferals to us on policy, further pushing Keck knew what he was doing, breaking the TOS. The co-owner of the Discord also shared DMs of him talking to Clark. The two aren't really well liked by the company due to their bad past. This is also a factor of why the things that happened to Keck happened. But this isn't just to paint Keck as a bad influencer. He just made some mistakes that could have easily been avoided. And hopefully many other feral YouTubers can avoid this too. Boys read the TOS kids. Now onto the last bit of the Discord I wanted to discuss. It was something that Keck brought up earlier and the Instagram post related to it. Some weeks ago when this was all fresh, Keck opened a petition for him to get his strikes removed, which didn't work. Both posts from what I can find have been deleted, but I managed to keep the images I had. And this is the original post that Keck made on the whole situation, which linked to his Instagram, now edited just to say the date the channel got terminated on. And now this is where I get to the most dreaded part of the video, the Instagram responses. I will be going over them briefly in response, but you can pause the video to see the whole image for yourself. As you can see, this post in the petition started to make people contact Wildworks through either Instagram and possibly DMs from the petition. There was a lot more, but they all were summed up into these two comments. First, that he only did it for your game, reply. 
I don't really blame these people. They don't understand what's going on. Keck, not intentionally, made it out to be Wild Works was just striking him for images, and not that it was seriously breaking their TOS and infringing their copyright. The second type of comment was made by these two people, specifically Audrey. They sum up my thoughts exactly, and others seem to agree as well. Again, the people who think Wild Works are bad people don't understand IPS and TOS properly. But like I said earlier, hopefully this video will explain. Phew, finally. Now that we've covered all of that shenanigans, we're on to the second section of the video. And I had the most fun making it, probably because it was the easiest. To understand how to make acceptable content on Feral, we've got to understand how fair use works so you don't break it by accident. I'll briefly go over it, but like I said, I've put a playlist down below explaining everything. And I really recommend both of Crown Prince's videos on copyright. So, fair use. For your something, in this case a video, to be more likely to win in a courtroom case as fair use, or just on YouTube, the video should be at least one of these things. Commentary. In this case, it's just normal gameplay of the game, like a series. Educational. This is self-explanatory. I believe teaching people how to play the game could also fall into this category. But if not, it just falls into commentary. A parody. In this case, it would likely be a YouTube poop or a funny feral vine voiceover compilation, something like that. Critique. You are putting your own input on anything public in the game, like say you're critiquing how a game mechanic works or the quest system, etc. News reports. You are reporting on the recent news relating to the topic. This does not include copyright infringing things like sharing around leaks or data mines. Normal things like a new creature has been publicly released to the game is fine. If your video falls into the any of the above, it should be fine. But remember, when you're using someone else's property, they have the right to claim it whenever fit. But if a strong fair case use, you could take them to court, or they could take you to court, and you could win. I don't think Wild Works would randomly take down a normal feral video, or take a child to court though. It's just an example. Finally on the fair use topic. I can't stress this enough, because a lot of YouTubers ignore this. No matter how fair use your video is, if you break the company's tier west or infringe their copyright, it will be taken down. This is why Keck's video didn't count as fair use and wouldn't win in a courtroom. And that's it guys, all I had to cover on the situation. Hopefully I shed some light and even help you understand fair use a bit more. Like I said, the entire playlist on the subject is below, and I strongly recommend watching Crown Prince's videos on it. And before I go, massive thank you to Pugface777 for letting me use the footage you can see in the background. Go check out the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.